Hello everyone. In this video, I will be talking about mechanical properties of fluids, hydrostatics. So first we can see an introduction. Liquids and gases are called fluids since they can flow. A fluid has no shape of its own. It takes the shape of its container. This can be seen if we take the example of water. Water always takes the shape of the bottle in which it is stored. Solids and liquids have fixed volume while gases fill the entire volume of the container. The volume depends on the pressure acting on the object. Gases have higher compressibility than solids or liquids, which means gases undergo greater change in volume or small change in pressure when compared to solids or liquids. Fluids offer little resistance to shear stress. Now we can see what we mean by pressure. You know that it is possible to prick your hand with a needle while it is really hard to prick your hand with a blunt object. So what it means is the area to which the force is applied. If to a smaller area, a greater force is applied. That is the case when we prick our hand with a needle. So we can define pressure as the normal force acting per unit area. That is pressure is given by force divided by area. It is a scalar quantity and its SI unit is Newton per meter square or Pascal after the French scientist Blasey Pascal who conducted pioneering studies in fluid pressure. Now we can see the Pascal's law. The French scientist Blasey Pascal observed that the pressure in a fluid at rest is the same at all points if they are at the same height. For that, we can consider a very small prismoid object inside a fluid filled container. In this case, the force of gravity at the points D, B, C, F, E are considered to be say since the prismoid object is small and the force experienced by the prismoid object is basically due to the fluid at rest which is acting normal to the surfaces of the prismoid object. From this figure, we, by equilibrium, we can see that Fb sin theta is equal to Fc and Fb cos theta is equal to Fa. Now by geometry, Ab sin theta is equal to Ac and Ab cos theta is equal to Aa. Now if we divide Fb by Ab, then we get Fb by Ab is equal to Fc by Ac. Similarly, Fb by Ab is equal to Fa by Aa. So we can say that Fb by Ab is equal to Fc by Ac is equal to Fa by Aa or pressure error at phase B is equal to pressure at phase C is equal to pressure at phase A. This is what the Pascal's law states. Hence, in the absence of flow, 
the pressure in the fluid must be same everywhere. If there is a pressure difference, then the fluid starts flowing. For example, wind is a consequence of a pressure change. And when wind blows, the pressure in those regions becomes equal. Now, variation of pressure with depth. For this, we can consider a cylinder immersed in a fluid. The cylinder is having a mass of m and having a height of h and cross-sectional area of a. Now, if m and the top point is 1 and the bottom part of the cylinder is 2. And if mg is the weight of the fluid in the cylinder, P, we can see that P2A, which is the force acting on cylinder, cylindrical phase 2 and P1A, which is the force acting on cylindrical phase 1. The difference gives P21 minus P1A into A is equal to mg, which is the total weight of the cylinder. Since the fluid is at rest, if rho is the mass density of the fluid, we have mass of the fluid to be m is equal to rho v or v which is the volume is equal to height of the cylinder into area of the cross section. So we get the equation as p2 minus p1 is equal to rho h g. The variable a which is the area of the cross section gets cancelled out. So if P1 is replaced by atmospheric pressure and P2 by P, then we get this equation. That is pressure at a height h from the surface. P is equal to Pa, where Pa is the atmospheric pressure plus rho h g. The excess pressure P minus Pa is called the gauge pressure. So, this shows that Pressure increases with depth. Now we can see hydrostatic paradox. In this case, we can see three water containers having different shapes and are connected at the bottom by a common tube. Here the height of the fluid in these three vessels is the same. This is because on filling with water, the level in the three vessels is the same, though they hold different amounts of water. This is so because water at the bottom has the same pressure below each section of the vessel. And hence, the height of the fluid has to be equal in all these vessels for the pressure at the bottom to be equal. This is known as hydrostatic paradox. Now atmosphere can gauge pressure. The pressure of the atmosphere at any point is equal to the weight of a column of air of unit cross-sectional area extending from that point to the top of the atmosphere. And gauge pressure, gauge pressure is the amount by which the pressure measured in a fluid exceeds that of the atmosphere. Now we can see the application of the Pascal's rule. That is hydraulic machines. Whenever external pressure is applied on any part of a fluid contained in a vessel, it is 
transmitted undiminished and equally in all directions. This is the Pascal's law for transmission of fluid pressure and has many applications in daily life. A number of devices such as the hydraulic lift and hydraulic brakes are based on the Pascal's law. Now we can see as an example the working of the hydraulic lift. This is a schematic diagram of a hydraulic lift. In this, a force F1 is applied at a small cross sectional area A1, which in turn causes a greater force F2 by which the car is raised. This is a consequence of the Pascal's law. According to Pascal's law, the pressure at any point in the same horizontal plane is equal. So, pressure is given by force by area. That is, P is equal to F1 by A1. And this same pressure is applied by F2 by A2. That is F1 by A1 is equal to F2 by A2. So the applied force has been increased by a factor of A2 by A1. And this factor is the mechanical advantage of the device. So by applying a smaller force, a greater force is produced to raise the car. Here F2 is greater than F1. So this is the end of this video. In this video, I have given an introduction about the mechanical properties of fluids as well as discussed some of the concepts of hydrostatics. If you have got any doubt in any of the topics discussed in this video, please comment in the section below this video. Thank you.